Admittedly, I've never met a Scientologist in person. I've never attended a Scientology meeting. I've never had any face-to-face -face encounters with Scientology whatsoever. Well, at least, not to my knowledge. However, there's enough evidence all over the internet that their so-called religion is actually a vicious and dangerous cult that takes control of people's money and their lives. I'm sure there are some nice Scientologists, but that doesn't mean Scientology is a nice religion. All evidence indicates that the Church of Scientology has a crackpot hierarchy that have their eyes set on power and control. Tom Cruise and David Miscavige are the top dogs of the Scientology pecking order. Within the Church, Cruise is basically seen as single-handedly saving the world and is revered as some kind of deity. Miscavige is the leader of the Church, with the official title of Chairman of the Board of the Religious Technology Centre. He served as Cruise's best man when he married Katie Holmes in 2006. Interestingly, both men are quite short, Cruz is about 5 foot 7, and from videos I've seen, Miscavige is quite a bit shorter, so maybe around 5 foot 5. They have both been described as having a Napoleonic complex. That is, they're short men that compensate for their lack of height by being overly aggressive and showing domineering social behaviour. To be fair, some research has indicated that Napoleonic complex is probably a myth, but let's run with it anyway. It fits the narrative. The Church of Scientology was founded by L. Ron Hubbard, an American science fiction writer, in 1953. From all accounts, he wasn't a very nice man, but yet found a following with his new form of religion. The religion is based on something called Dianetics, which Hubbard invented prior to forming the religion. It basically states that the mind is divided into three parts. The conscious, analytical mind, the subconscious, reactive mind, and the somatic mind. The goal of Dianetics is to erase the content of the reactive mind, because it can interfere with a person's ethics, awareness, happiness, and sanity. The American Psychological Association criticised Hubbard's claims as not being supported by empirical evidence. But then again, I suppose that's true of any religion. Just for your interest, Hubbard was quoted as saying, "...writing for a penny a word is ridiculous. If a man really wants to make a million dollars, the best way would be to start his own religion." It is often stated that Hubbard started Scientology in order to enjoy the tax benefits afforded to religious organisations. Practitioners of Scientology go through a process called auditing, where they are hooked up to an electro-psychometer, an e-meter, and audited by a counsellor to identify sources of traumatic events in the individual's past. The goal is to free the individual of the effects of the past trauma by systematic exposure and removal of the past memories, a process referred to as clearing. It sounds nice on paper, but it's obviously bullshit. It's a way to convince susceptible individuals to hand over their hard-earned money. It can cost upwards of $800 an hour to have an auditing session. Surely, if Scientologists wanted to help the world, they'd offer this as a free service, would they not? Consequently, many of the higher-ups in the Church are very wealthy individuals. They're the only ones able to afford the costs associated with the higher-level ranks. Yes, there's a monetary cost to rising through the ranks of the Church of Scientology. Scientologists believe that each individual has a cluster of body thetans, effectively souls, that are stuck in a human body. These thetans came about approximately 75 million years ago through a major catastrophe caused by a galactic dictator named Xenu. He apparently stacked all his people around volcanoes on Earth and killed them using hydrogen bombs. Thetans are seen as immoral spirits who stick themselves to human bodies, causing us spiritual harm. In order for a Scientologist to reach the first rank of clear, as far as I can work out, a person must no longer have his own reactive mind, and therefore suffers none of the ill effects the reactive mind can cause. This requires a lot of auditing, and therefore a lot of money. After clear comes the operating thetan levels. Each level has a series of training requirements and associated costs. OT1 costs about $2,750. OT2 costs $5,225. OT3, $8,910, and so on, all the way up to OT8. OT8 is known as The Truth Revealed, and can only be delivered to members in a single location, aboard the organization's private cruise ship, the Free Winds. It's been said that an individual has to shell out over $500,000 over their lifetime to get to the highest ranks. Consequently, we have people like Tom Cruise and John Travolta at the top of the food chain. 
Many determined Scientologists join an internal group called the Sea Organization, or Sea Org. Its members are said to be the most dedicated practitioners of Scientology. David Miscavige is the highest ranking Sea Org officer, holding the rank of Captain. Former members of the Sea Org describe it as a totalitarian organization, where members lose almost all freedom and are constantly under surveillance. Members are given room, board, and a weekly allowance of about $75. They must sign a billion-year commitment with the Sea Org, stating that they will come back to the organization when they are reborn. Extramarital sex is strictly forbidden in the Sea Org, but members may marry other members. Marrying outside the organization is forbidden. Couples that have children must leave the Sea Org and work in lower positions within the church until their child turns six. At that point, they must return to the Sea Org without their child, who is raised communally by the church. The child is allowed to visit their parents on weekends. Several former members have spoken about forced abortions that occur to prevent people from leaving the Sea Org to lower organizations. However, Scientology officially presents itself as being opposed to abortion and actively speaks out against it in its publications. Any negative information that is published about Scientology is labelled as an enemy line. Practitioners are encouraged not to click on links that would potentially expose them to anything that would make them feel uncomfortable about the church. They participate in a collective self-monitoring of the information they consume. They are told not to forward an enemy line by reading negative magazine articles or watching particular videos. Scientologists listening to this recording would be forwarding an enemy line. We are all seen as apostates and are the enemies of Scientology. David Miscavige has been accused of violence within the church, although no charges have ever been laid. Jeff Hawkins, a former Scientologist, described being physically assaulted by Miscavige at one of their marketing meetings. Miscavige jumped up on the boardroom table, launched himself towards Hawkins, battered his face, and shoved him to the floor. The church responded to this allegation by devoting an entire issue of their Freedom magazine to attacking CNN's reporting and coverage of the alleged event. They attacked the reporter, Anderson Cooper, as well as the victim, Jeff Hawkins. Tom Cruise has verbally attacked other celebrities for their lifestyle choices which don't fall in accordance with his own religious beliefs. He is openly opposed to modern psychiatry, but insists that e-meters, thetans, and auditing are all scientifically proven. In a word, these people are nutjobs. They are bullies and sycophants. They abuse susceptible victims by telling them that they are holding on to past trauma. The only way to remove the trauma is by attending expensive auditing sessions and handing over your money. But unfortunately, you'll never be cured. You are forever handing over money trying to reach an unattainable goal. Apologies to Scientologists if I have gotten some of the details wrong. The organization is notoriously secretive, so it's hard to get the real story. Admittedly, it's easy to confuse one form of bullshit with another. But certainly, if I could describe Scientology in one word, it would be bullshit. Don't be fooled by their shiny machines and big boats. I don't care what you believe in, as long as it doesn't hurt others. But the beliefs and doctrines of Scientology, a religion created by a science fiction writer, are clearly the ramblings of a madman.